This summer for the Game Maker's Toolkit Game Jam, I made the game Where's My Lunch? It was an okay game, nothing profoundly creative or groundbreaking, just okay. And I, like many others, plan on leaving the game in a folder and never really looking at it again. And then I got a suggestion from a viewer. Why not take that game and publish it? The process could make great video content and be a resource for others who might want to do more with their projects. Whoa. I let the idea rattle around in my head for a few days and then a few weeks. The more I thought about it, the more I liked it. Over the last year or two, I've been far more focused on making video content rather than working on my own project, which means I often just have a few hours a month to work on the game. Progress is slow, and that progress is further slowed down by needing to remember what I was doing two weeks ago or what problem I was trying to solve last month. It's not working great, and I suspect many of you know exactly what I'm talking about. But by their very nature, Game Jam games are simple. Their scope is small, even tiny, and that makes it perfect for me and maybe you at this point in time. So maybe, just maybe, I can work on a game and at the same time create decent tutorial content for the channel. Now this project isn't going to make me piles of money, I don't think that's even a distant possibility, and it's not really the goal. The goal is to make something, finish that something, and document the process so that others, maybe you, might do the same with your game. So how many of you have dreamt about publishing a game on Steam? How many of you have a game from a game jam sitting in a folder that with a few months of polish could be worth sharing with a larger audience? Now let's be clear, I'm not talking about some generic 2D platformer with floaty jump mechanics that was your first Unity project. But I'm also not saying that you need to place in the top 10 in an international game jam. I certainly didn't. Maybe your game needs some redesign or a few tweaks to be its best, and that's okay. My game certainly does. Where's My Lunch did well on Fun Factor and a few other bits, but it clearly isn't a particularly original game idea. And again, that's okay. So let's do it. Let's do it together. Let's take a Game Jam game, polish it, and publish it. Now for the upcoming videos, I'm going to try to find a sweet spot somewhere between a traditional devlog and a tutorial, while hopefully bringing you along for the ride, showing you my progress, and helping you make progress on your own game. For my game, I'm going to be adding it to Steam, making use of Face Punch Steamworks, adding Steam features such as achievements and maybe the Steam Workshop. And of course, I'm going to be polishing and expanding the gameplay to dozens of levels, all hopefully without adding too much feature creep. I'm also looking into several features offered by Unity, such as analytics and cloud diagnostics. So if those are interesting, make sure you stay tuned. Now, when there's a system or a process that can be of use to the larger game development community, I'll slow down and do a more complete tutorial on how that system works and how I build mine. So does that sound interesting? Maybe useful? Well, I hope it does. Let me introduce you to my game, Where's My Lunch? It's a hand-drawn 2D game that presents a new puzzle to be solved by the player each level. Your goal is to steer the character towards their lunch, but your controls, they aren't very precise. The theme for the game jam was out of control, and that's reflected in some of the chaos of the gameplay. Your only tools, at least in the current build, are bombs, portals, and gravity wells. The bombs explode and exert a force, and the portals come in a linked pair and warp the player from one location to another. And the gravity wells, they just exert an attractive force based on the distance from the player. Now I will be adding to these as I work on the game, but these three game mechanics were enough, or more realistically, all I could manage for a 48 hour game jam. Now certainly there are some bugs that need to get fixed and addressed, and mostly this has to do with placing items in a level. For example, at the moment, it's easy to place a portal on top of the player and to be unable to move it later. So I need to create a clear level functionality to let the player wipe the level and start over with a fresh attempt. Other things like placing a gravity well near the sandwich seems to make it too easy, but more importantly, some of these flaws allow the player to break a level by finding a trivial solution. And that's okay, but it can take away some of the challenge and thus the reward from the game. As I thought about the project design and what all needs to be done, I realized that clever level design may be one of the toughest challenges that I see in completing the project. Puzzle games, I think, are often seen as easy to make, but the reality is they are just as tough or tougher than other genres. But again, I need to remind myself that the goal here isn't to make the most awesome game, just to make a decent game. So let's dig in a little bit to how things actually work in the game, the mechanics of the game, so to speak. So here again, things are pretty simple and the game leans heavily on the physics engine. Now the Unity physics engine does have downsides, as it's not fully deterministic, and by that I mean two identical starting conditions won't necessarily have identical results. If we look at the player object, it's a ragdoll with a basic bone structure built from 2D hinges. 
There's not really any gameplay mechanics here. It's just a lot more fun to watch a player with arms and legs flopping all over the place. Now, since the physics engine is non-deterministic, I chose to use a large circle collider on the player's body, as this made the motion of the object more repeatable with a small loss in floppy ragdoll goodness. After that, the programming is mostly triggers and a little custom code for each of the tiles or objects in the scene. As a fun challenge in the game jam, and I think at the suggestion of a viewer, I added a sandbox level that allows the player to create their own level from scratch. This is one of the systems that I plan on expanding so the players can not only build levels, but share those levels, and they'll hopefully be doing that with the Steam Workshop. Maybe I'll even incorporate some player-made levels into the final build, so stay tuned for that and maybe you can get an early key and we can add your levels into the game. Changing gears a little bit, during the game jam I quickly realized that I needed to streamline the workflow for making and saving levels. Having each level in its own scene was going to get messy in a hurry, and I needed a better way. One of the great things about game jams is you are forced to get creative and do so efficiently, and as a result I came up with a simple but effective scene creation system. In my system, which I'll do a full tutorial on, essentially scans the scene in the editor for game tiles, all of which have a save level object component on them, and then it stores the basic transform information for each object, as well as a reference to what type of object it is. The data is then stored in a list on a scriptable object. Since the data is stored in a simple list, I'm hoping this will make using third party tools like easy save quick and hopefully relatively painless. The plan is to have each level stored in a separate save file, which can hopefully be shared between players on the Steam Workshop. Now I've never done any work with the Steam Workshop, so I'm pretty excited about that and it's something that I've wanted to do for a while. Now there are certainly other chunks of code such as the code that allows the player to wrap around the screen or to trace the path of the player, but those are all small details and not core functionality. If you want to see those bits of code, let me know in the comments below and we'll see what we can do. Now I've got a list of new mechanics that I want to add to the game. These include buttons, levers, doors, flamethrowers, ice, electric fields, and whatever else I might come up with. These mechanics should be easy to add and shouldn't cause significant changes in the core architecture. There are things that will require significant changes, such as Steam integration, like achievements in the Steam Workshop. I'm also exploring the idea of adding more than one goal to the game, to give a bit more depth as the levels progress. So maybe it's not just about getting your sandwich but maybe you need to grab a drink or chips on the way to your sandwich. I don't know exactly, but I do know that I need to build the code for that functionality pretty early in the project, as this could affect quite a few other systems. I'd also like to explore some sort of scoring system to add replayability to each level. This could be the classic three-star system or something more numeric on a leaderboard. I don't know, but I do know that this may need to get built sooner rather than later. If you want to see a full roadmap for Where's My Lunch, check out the Notion page linked in the description below. There's a list of everything that I planned out so far, and it's in varying detail. But I think the real beauty of this project is not how much can be added, but how few major systems need to be created. The game is functional, it just needs to be polished and integrated with Steam. Now that's not to say that this is a short or easy project, there is a ton of work to do, but it's the amount of work and the type of work that is manageable and doable. So what do you say? Do you have a small game gathering dust? Why not polish that game and release it? And who cares if you make any money? Simply publishing a game to Steam is a huge accomplishment in and of itself. So go blow the dust off your game and stay tuned to this channel as the project gets started. I'll be making videos as I progress and hopefully have at least one video out each month. And until next time, happy game designing.